So this is going to be the brand new La Ventura Hotel and Casino, huh? Scheduled to open its doors spring of 2009. They sure don't make them like they used to. They sure don't seem to be able to make this one at all. First it was the city council, then the environmentalists. Now it's the Bureau of Sanitation shutting them down over faulty sewage lines. Nothing's getting done around here until somebody cleans some pipes. Jeez, what hasn't happened to delay this thing? A dead body. Like the place is cursed. Construction worker over there called it in. I haven't taken a statement yet. Good to see you. Thought I might be flying solo on this one. Okay, time to go to work. Hard hat could belong to our Vic, but how to get all the way over here? Ouch. We'll take a closer look at him when we get to the morgue. But where did he come from? Partial shoe impression. Looks as though someone approached the body then tried to cover their tracks. Most of those windows are boarded shut, except for the one right above our Vic. We're from the crime lab. May we have your name? Marcus Conchai. I'm the plumbing foreman. Well, I guess I should say I used to be the plumbing foreman on this job. Yeah, that's right. I arrived this morning to pick up my last check. I looked over there, and I couldn't believe it. I immediately called 911. Bureau of Sanitation shut us down because of some faulty sewage pipes, and the construction company's basically holding me responsible. So, yesterday, they finally decided to let me go. And, like I said, I just came by this morning to pick up the rest of my equipment and my severance check. No. I mean, I didn't get close enough to the body to look at his face. I couldn't bring myself to walk all the way over there. It was just too horrible. Why do you want to do that? To exclude you as a suspect, Mr. Kunchai. Okay, sure. Thanks for your help, Mr. Kunchai. We'll be in touch. I kind of hope not, but, you know, good luck with everything. I'll have Robin send someone down to pick up the body. Silver Sierra is a pretty big building contractor in Las Vegas. Looks like the Zachary Lynch is the company's boss. Office is locked. Office is locked. That's a 220 volt cable, but I don't see any outlets for one of those up here. Contractor's fingerprints are usually on work cards in the system.
little strange, don't you think? If this turns out to be our victim's blood, why was he bleeding before he took a header off the balcony? If these fingerprints on the balcony railing come back to our victim, it's suggestive of suicide. We can head over to the coroner's office or the lab as soon as you think we're done here. Brass will hold the scene for us just in case we need to come back for something. But I didn't do anything. Your fingerprints will help prove that. All right. Hey, Doc. Do you have our John Doe's cause of death? Massive internal blunt force trauma. His rib cage is shattered, both lungs are punctured, and his spleen and right kidney are ruptured. He basically bled out internally. That's right. Time of death? Based on lividity and rigor, I'd estimate 10 to 12 hours ago. Which would put his TOD between 9 and 11 p.m. last night. Two very distinct ligature marks. The larger ligature mark directly under the chin here goes all the way around the neck and angles upwards at about 65 degrees. The second, smaller mark is also all the way around, but practically straight back and parallel. You can clearly make out those two different ligature patterns. They'll be easy to compare to the separate ligatures, if you're able to find them. Let me get a shot of those. Make sure you photograph each ligature mark. Well, one ligature mark might certainly suggest a suicide attempt. Two unique ligature marks complicate matters without actually eliminating the possibility that the victim was trying very hard to end his life. Now his internal injuries, which ultimately led to his death, are consistent with a fall from a considerable height. But again, there's no way to determine from my examination whether your victim jumped willingly or had some help. So our John Doe's death under suspicious circumstances means... Means that until presented with evidence to the contrary, I'm forced to label his death a homicide. Absolutely, here they are. Got it right here for you. Already bagged and tagged for you. What is that? Don't suicide notes always sound forged? Or do I just read too many spy novels? This one is conveniently typed and neatly folded for us to find. Is there anything else on it? Partial fingerprint. Hopefully it's enough to start getting us some answers.
These records aren't exactly up to the minute, but they confirm Marcus Kunchai was employed at La Ventura. Mark Ensign. Well, we've confirmed the identity of our victim. These prints put our victim at the railing. Victim's prints match the prints on the power cable. Whoa, the fingerprint on the suicide note belongs to Zachary Lynch. What a boss, huh? He even helps his employees with their suicide notes. Agent Humpy here has some information he'd like to share with us. It's regarding Mark Ensign's apparent suicide. I don't know where you're at with this investigation right now, but there's no way Mark Ensign killed himself. I think you may be getting a little bit ahead of the evidence, Agent Huntby. Look, I was this close to turning him into a criminal informant. Ensign was about to go out on a limb, so he was pretty scared. Scared enough to take his own life? Absolutely not. Or aren't you authorized to discuss that? Look, off the record, Ensign was on the verge of turning state's evidence on allegations of kickbacks and bribes involved in the construction of the La Ventura Casino. He would have been my eyes and ears at the Silver Sierra Construction Company. He'd been working there as Zachary Lynch's right arm for five years. Lynch is the president of the company. And before that, he was Beatriz Salazar's lawyer, back in Miami, about ten years ago. But we suspect she's maintained the relationship, through Silver Sierra. So Ensign might have been your way to get to Salazar. Well, with your help, I'm hoping he might still be. Good luck. Based on what evidence? Lynch touched the suicide note? What else has he been up to? Why don't you go check out his office and see what you can turn up? The victim's blood is on the balcony railing. Seems a little odd if he were just by himself and getting ready to jump.
The power cable left the larger of the two ligature marks around the victim's neck. Look who's here, Zachary Lynch. You want to talk to him first, or should we check out the office? Mr. Lynch, we're from the Las Vegas Crime Lab. We have a search warrant for your office. Of course you do, but you're wasting your time. Mark was dealing with a lot of personal issues, and I think you're way out of line here, using his suicide as an excuse to harass me. I talked to Mark on the phone last night. He sounded awful, worse than I'd ever heard him. I told him he needed to take some time off, clear his head. So we planned to meet this morning to discuss the details of a temporary leave of absence. But when I got here, I found him, and I found his note, and I read it. And then I put it back where I found it. I should have, I know that, but La Ventura has suffered delay after delay, and I just needed to take some time to figure out what I was going to do next. How I was going to explain to my investors that our lead man on the job was dead, that he had taken his own life. Do you understand what I'm talking about? It just doesn't inspire a lot of confidence in my company's ability to finish this very expensive, highly anticipated project. I went home, poured myself a drink and waited. I guess I was waiting for a conversation like this, with people like you. Whatever it takes to get this over with. We're done for now, Mr. Lynch. But don't leave town. Yeah, I wouldn't dream of it. files have been deleted, we should be able to recover them. Check out whether this is the computer that generated the suicide note, and when it generated that note. Blood on my keyboard? It could be Mark's, I guess. No, it's not mine. Both Mark and I are authorized to use the computer. I bought the damn thing, but Mark was here on site all the time, so basically it was his computer. So the last document created on this computer was the suicide note, but it was created nearly eight hours after Mark Ensign died.
Zachary Lynch's fingerprints in blood on his computer keyboard. Now that's incriminating. Blood on the keyboard belongs to Mark Ensign. What do you got in the way of evidence? Print in the victim's blood. That'll do it. I'll bring him in. We found your fingerprints in blood on the computer keyboard in your office. So what? I already told you I found Mark and I picked up his suicide note. There was blood everywhere. And then you told us you left the construction site. You didn't mention going back to your office first. Are you serious? Look, I wasn't keeping a record of my every movement, so yes, I went back to the office. And I went to the computer to check on where Mark had left everything. And then I went home. How dare you ask me that question? No, I didn't write Mark's suicide note. Turns out that Mark Ensign's suicide note was printed from your computer after the time of death. Care to explain that? Oh my god. This is not what it looks like. Really? Because it looks like you did a very bad job trying to make a murder look like a suicide. I didn't kill Mark. All I did was... frame a guilty man. What's that supposed to mean? Mark killed himself. He jumped off that balcony. I don't think there's any question about that. But... Just in case there was going to be some question about it, I didn't want you guys snooping around my property for God knows how long looking for a killer. So, I planted the suicide note, hoping you guys would just think it was an open and shut case. That is one of the dumbest stories I've ever heard, Mr. Lynch. Not only is it an admission of obstruction, but it doesn't even begin to give you an alibi. No one I can think of off the top of my head. But, you know, Mark was starting to alienate a lot of folks. He was starting to act crazy, manic, impulsive. I mean, the night he died, he must have called up some subcontractor out of the blue and hired him without my approval to completely rip up the lobby and then plant that weird native cactus garden. But who the hell do you call after business hours to plant a damn garden? I don't know, but maybe that guy knows something about what happened to Mark. Wait, you're telling us that that cactus isn't supposed to be there? Maybe we need to take a closer look at that garden. We can sit here and you can continue to harass and try to intimidate me, but seriously, I have nothing more to say to you people. You want to know my alibi? Why don't you just ask Agent Huntby? Oh yeah, I know him. We actually haven't had the pleasure of a formal introduction, but let's just say we have mutual friends and some of his friends have been tailing me for the last six months. Maybe they'll have some pictures for you. Maybe a recording, video. I understand they like to do that sort of thing. They're kinky like that. Absolutely not. I never laid a hand on Mark. Look, Agent Huntley, I'm fine with you and the feds piggybacking on our investigation, but when you have information we need, you need to share it with us immediately. 
I appreciate your position, Jim. I do, I don't but... give a damn what you appreciate. I want to know why we may be wasting our time interrogating a suspect if you already know he has an alibi. I'm trying to tell you it wasn't my call. There are protocols for sharing information. Yes, we are, but I'm not in charge of that particular operation. Well, according to the field report, Lynch returned home from dinner at 3 a.m. No further movement was observed inside his house until the following morning. No. And the truth is, I can't confirm Zachary Lynch's whereabouts at the time of Mark Enson's murder. Why not? This morning, Lynch apparently gave our surveillance team the slip. So you trying to tell us that you don't trust your men? Yes, that's exactly what I'm trying to tell you, Jim. Off the record, that is. On the record, I should tell you to go to hell. Looks like we can't be sure whether Lynch was at home or not. Maybe it's time we looked at our crime scene a little more closely. Let's get this to the lab and find out what kind of plant it is. Check this out. So I was doing a little background on this ash metal gum plant, and I found these articles related to the building of the La Ventura Casino. It seems that an environmental group called Primeval won a temporary injunction against Silver Sierra's construction of La Ventura. It was seeking a supplemental environmental impact report on the Ash Meadows habitat, which Prime Evil claimed was being threatened at the building site. But it looks like an appeals court overturned the injunction. Well, from the smell of it, I bet I can guess what that is. And if it's some sort of specialty fertilizer, then maybe we can connect it back to a specific manufacturer or distributor. This is a high-grade synthetic fertilizer. It's rare enough that brass should be able to contact the manufacturer and get a record of the people to whom they sell and ship their product. We should swing by his office. I'm on it. Obrera's lawyers were very cooperative. And fortunately for us, there was only one buyer who purchased the fertilizer in our area. About six months ago, a nursery called Green Growth Plants. Turns out that nursery is owned by a man by the name of Todd Stewart. Todd Stewart? We can't prove it yet, but we suspect he's connected to a group called Primeval. We think he's a terrorist, an eco-terrorist. Todd Stewart, we'd like to ask you a few questions. I'm a little confused. Am I in some kind of trouble here? Your name came up during the course of a homicide investigation. Homicide? Who got killed? Construction foreman over at the La Ventura site. His name is Mark Ensign. No, I don't. 
No, sir, I don't. Not that I know of. No, I'm sorry. You know, build a garden? Maybe water some plants? No, no one ever has. And I would never accept a job like that, even if it were offered to me. Their money no good for you? Do we really need another casino in Las Vegas? Really? For that matter, do we really need another gated housing community or a freeway? When is this gonna stop? Not to get on my soapbox here, but I do consider myself to be a very active environmentalist, and I can't stand to bear witness to what we are doing to literally exterminate our planet. She truly is our Mother Earth, and we owe it to her to do whatever we can to keep her safe. Yes, I am familiar with them, and I already know what your next question is going to be. Are you a member of Primeval, Mr. Stewart? No, I am not a member, but I will be honest with you. I believe in their cause. I do. This runaway train of so-called progress must be derailed somehow, otherwise this beautiful planet will die. And if protecting our planet sometimes means resorting to guerrilla gardening, so be it. It falls right in line with the traditional practice of civil disobedience. Well, you may not be a member, but it kind of sounds like you might have pledged a few dollars over the years. I often wish I had. And I bet you wish I had. Because that would mean you could arrest me right now for helping to finance a terrorist group. But the sad truth is, I don't have the courage of my convictions. I'm just a gardener. Of my shoe? Why? Is there a problem, Mr. Stewart? I got a problem with you playing fast and loose with my rights. But you know what? Let's just get this whole thing over with. Take my whole damn shoe if you like. Thanks for showing us the bottom of your shoe, Todd. <laughs> you gotta be kidding, right? We don't even need to draw your blood. Just a swab to the mouth will do. Totally painless. But why? We'd like to be able to exclude you as a potential suspect. You guys really are a piece of work. Whatever, take it. You know I did. That's why I'm here, isn't it? Anyone else have access to it? Yes. I have several people who work for me. Haven't we been over this? No, I've never been to the Laventor site. I've never heard a living soul. Thank you for your cooperation, Mr. Stewart. But we'd like you to stick around for a little bit while we verify some information. You know, I don't mind helping you guys. I just mind being treated like a criminal. Well, if the shoe fits. The shoe print we found at the crime scene is a match to Todd Stewart's shoe impression. Haven't we been over this? No, I've never been to the Laventor site. That's your shoe print at La Ventura, in the middle of the native garden, right where we found the body of Mark Ensign. I didn't kill anybody! Todd, it's time to come clean. Mark Ensign caught you vandalizing the property. He caught you in the act, didn't he? You struggled, and you killed him. All I did was plant the garden. My mission was to restore the ash metal to its rightful place. It had been smothered by the monstrosity of that building, and I put it right back where it belongs. And that's all I did, I swear. I have no idea what happened to Mark. He was alive when I left him. Well, now it sounds like you knew the victim.
It wasn't like we were friends or anything. I approached him, introduced myself, and appealed to his sense of justice for the planet. I asked him if he fully understood the havoc the building of Laventura was wreaking on the native environment of the Las Vegas Valley. The genocide of the ash metal. That was over six months ago, and he totally blew me off. But then last week, he actually called me. He invited you to tear up his lobby? See, you're trying to perpetuate the big lie. It wasn't his lobby. He was an employee. It had nothing to do with him. He was just a cog in the machine. The machine that is this whole consumer capitalist corporate complex. And somehow, Mark finally got it. It was like he found God. Total conversion. Really? Next, you'll be telling us Mark started writing checks out to Primeval. Look, this operation had nothing to do with Primeval. It was my own initiative. And Mark turned out to be my greatest ally. I finished setting the garden around 9 p.m. But before I left, another construction worker had shown up. I think he was the plumbing foreman. They started discussing the Bureau of Sanitation halt to construction. And then they started to argue. Kept hearing them mention this guy named Lynch like he was their boss or something. But they were really fighting over some money. Some cash left in a safe. Apparently it was a lot of cash. And the plumbing guy thought he was entitled to it. And I guess Mark didn't think so. Was this plumbing guy's name Marcus Kunchai? Mark kept yelling Marcus this, Marcus that, but I didn't catch the guy's last name. From their argument, it sounded like he was right up there in their office under a rug. We're going to follow up and try to check out your story, Todd. But in the meantime, we're going to be charging you with felony defacement, damage, destruction, and contamination of private property. I understand. You do what you have to do. I'm prepared to take the consequence of my actions. I answer to a higher authority. We can probably catch up with Marcus Kunchai at his office, see what he has to say for himself. But we should also go back to Lynch's office, check out if there really is a hidden safe full of cash. Just like Captain Jack searching for the buried treasure. That's interesting. I don't think this fiber is from the rug. Well, whatever cash was here is gone now. Looks like it could have been a lot. I wonder whose laptop this is. There are two interesting files here. Looks to me like a ledger of bribes, created by Ensign and signed off by Zachary Lynch. But it'll be difficult to prove. Wait a second. Marcus Kunchai lied to us. He told us he was there picking up his last check when he found Mark Ensign's body. But according to this payroll file, Kunchai was fired a week ago. Okay, maybe Todd Stewart was telling us the truth. If Kunchai felt entitled to the cash in the secret safe as a kind of severance package or hush money, then maybe he wasn't going to take no for an answer. That fiber is from an industrial use glove. What do you think? Maybe the kind of glove used by a plumber?
What evidence do you have? Good work. You got your warrant. Mr. Kunchai. I've got nothing to say to you. Snake, huh? That could definitely be used to strangle somebody. Does it have any kind of distinctive pattern? Nice find. Look familiar to you? Mr. Kunchai. I've got nothing to say to you. Fiber on the drain snake matches the fiber we found in the safe, and they're both from a pair of industrial use gloves. This drain snake left the smaller ligature mark around Mark Ensign's throat. Based on what evidence? Looks like we may have our killer. I haven't been entirely straightforward with you guys. I was with Mark the night he died. Recognize your work, Marcus? I didn't do this. I was fired yesterday. Okay. Yes. Technically, I was let go last week. Technically, you're a terrible liar, Marcus. Hold on. Mark never wanted to fire me. Lynch told him he had to. You know, because of all the trouble with the Bureau of Sanitation. I mean... That was totally my bad, but Mark tried to defend me and keep me on the job. Marcus, stop wasting our time here. I'm pretty sure I can figure out what really happened between you and Mark. Mark fires your ass. And maybe you come back to beg him to give you your job back? Or maybe not. But you definitely come back for a little cut of that cash your boss's boss is keeping in that safe. Mark tells you to go to hell, but come hell or high water, you're gonna get that money. Mark put up quite a fight, didn't he? You just weren't strong enough to squeeze the life out of him. So you had to push him over the balcony. Personally, I think you got lucky. Are you crazy? That never happened. 
I mean, some of it did, but damn, you're twisting me all around in my head here. Please, just give me a second. Yeah, we fought over the money, but I'd actually come back there just to ask for my job back. I mean, I'd even left all my tools and stuff all over the site because I figured Mark would still let me do some side stuff, you know, off the books. But he said no to that too, right? Yeah, he said no. He told me he was done with all the shenanigans of La Ventura and Silver Sierra. He was gonna quit, start over. So I said, great, let's both take the money and run. How'd you know about the money, Marcus? It was the worst kept secret on the property. Guys used to call it the tip jar. I can't believe you guys were never able to bust Lynch and company. And the way they used to kick back and bribe. Okay, let's stay focused on you right now, Marcus. You admit that you and Mark argued. Then it escalated. No, it didn't escalate. Mark was right. The money in the safe was blood money. I told him I didn't care, but I was just being a little bitch. Then I decided to give up on the whole thing. It was stupid. I left, and Mark was alive when I did. You really think I killed Mark, don't you? Most of the time, Marcus. We just try to let the evidence do our thinking for us. All right, I get it. We're going to hold you in custody at least until we process this evidence. Okay, do what you need to do. I swear, I'm innocent. Blood in Marcus's glove matches our victim. The epithelials inside the glove are... Todd Stewart? That means Todd must have been the last person to wear Marcus's gloves. What do you got in the way of evidence? Stewart's DNA was found in the glove that handled the murder weapon. I can work with that. You know, I think I'm just about done talking to you guys. I tried to be as cooperative as I could, but I got a lawyer now. And I'm making bail and walking out of here in about five minutes. No, in five minutes, you're going to be making another call to your lawyer. What are you talking about? 
I told you, when I left him, he was fighting with that plumber. Why aren't you out looking for him? I didn't do a damn thing to Mark. We found a unique fiber on one of the weapons used in Mark Ensign's homicide. It matches the fibers woven into the plumbing foreman's gloves. You know what epithelials are, Todd? They're skin cells. Well, check out the big brain on Todd. The skin cells we found inside the plumbing foreman's work gloves, those are yours. You're wrong. I've never seen those gloves before in my life. You need to retest them, or whatever the hell you guys do with that kind of garbage in the lab. I didn't steal anything. We recovered another stray fiber, this one from inside the safe, and it also matches the fibers in the work gloves. So what? Oh, give it up, Todd. It's over. Is that why you two fought? Is that why you had to kill him? This is a setup. I'm being framed. Maybe I used someone else's gloves when I was doing the gardening, but I swear, I didn't use those gloves to kill Mark Ensign. The Tree of Liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants. It is its natural manure. Excuse me? There was $25,000 of cash in that safe. Mark said it was blood money, and he was right. But he didn't understand that I could redeem it, that it could be used to further the cause. Mark just refused to hear me. I grabbed a drain snake out of a tool belt that was just lying around up there on the balcony, and I really thought I'd killed him. I don't know what got in my head to try to make it look like Mark had hanged himself. Seemed like a good idea at the time. But Mark woke up. And at that point, what else could I do? The truth is, a sacrifice was necessary for the greater good. Well, you want to know another inconvenient truth, Todd? What? You're under arrest for the murder of Mark Ensign. 